We're about to surprise the lady who runs Shampooches, the dog grooming business. Alicia is going to be so excited. We want to help her prove to her daughters that a woman can run a successful business, but we want to give her a little bit more of that balance and marketing is going to make a huge difference. We also want to freak out because, well, she has no idea we're here. So here we go. here to tell you that you guys have been selected. Shut the front door. Yes. Welcome to the Small Business Revolution. Oh, my God. You're going to cry. Oh, my God. Congratulations. I love you guys so much right now. Small towns across the country are fighting for their survival with the odds stacked against them. But what happens if we join that fight? If we dedicate a little money, a lot of experience, and thousands of hours of work into one small town, focusing on the businesses that are the heart of their main street. What started as an idea became a national movement with over 30,000 towns nominated for the $500,000 makeover and more than a million votes cast for the winner. Good evening, Alton, Illinois. Now, in our third season, the team is taking on its biggest challenge ever. The town is three times bigger than any we've helped before, and the hurdles Alton faces will put to the test the very idea of Main Street America. So, Amanda Brinkman and her team of marketing experts at Deluxe are going to work for the people of Alton, Illinois. And they're not alone. New season three co-host Ty Pennington will be working with the team to rehabilitate the town's buildings while a whole cast of experts helps rehabilitate its businesses. Every episode, we'll be working with a new small business to see if we can change the odds. If, together, we can start a revolution. As far back as I can remember, we've had dogs I feel like it teaches my kids how to be compassionate and have empathy and responsibility. You can't help but want to care for and nurture a dog. They love you unconditionally, and humans don't do that. When I was about 13, my best friend's aunt owned a kennel and grooming salon, and they taught me to groom on the weekends, and I've just been doing it ever since. I wanted to open my own salon for years. I mean, I talked about it nonstop. Finally, I just took the leap. And I opened Shampooches in 2015. Are you the best girl, Betsy? Now, my kids can come in after school or Saturdays. They bring lunch in and they eat with me. I like it here because I want to help her. And the dogs are very playful and sweet. Yeah, I'm happy that she opened this because I think it's cool that she could like accomplish it. She did a real good job. I feel proud of her. I feel really proud of her that she works hard. Hey, Tito. P. You are just a hairy beast. <laughs> so we're going short like usual? Yes. Yes. People think that they can groom their dog at home, and they try, and then they bring it to me to fix it. You ready, Biscuit? I feel like it takes a special kind of person to know what a dog's thinking. It takes a lot of patience. You almost have to have a sixth sense. We love our dogs like they're our own children. Trust is huge. And Alicia has this sense of making us comfortable. And our pets let us know that they're comfortable with her because they run oh right goodness. to Alicia. And Alicia <laughs> greets them first, yeah. Yeah. then she greets us. <laughs> yes. I can tell that Alicia loves my dogs just like I would, and she treats them just like I would. We will never go anywhere else. <laughs> I think the most challenging part of owning a business is the business side of it. I, I know that I'm a good dog groomer, but I've never ran a business. We just kind of jumped in and hoped that we could wing it, and that's what we've been doing. I don't really go about doing the books and the marketing. I haven't set a realistic budget. And it's all because I'm here, you know, 50 or 60 hours a week just grooming. So I have no time to do it. And then, then come tax time, and I'm sitting on my couch crying with receipts everywhere. And it gets really stressful. I haven't had a Saturday off in over a year. We haven't ever had a family vacation because we work so hard. Like my husband and I, 
we put everything we have into shampooches. And my kids, there had been times when they were like, oh my gosh, mom, why are you working again? Can't you go back to, you know, the normal job? So you're home more. I always tell them if they work really hard and pour their heart into something, it's always gonna be worth it. Like, this is what mommy wants to do. We see it time and time again. Small business owners with a passion for their work, but not so much love for the fundamentals of running a business. This can cause big problems down the line, not the least of which is burnout. After a 60 hour work week, what business owner is eager to go home and stare down the numbers? But there is a way to find balance. And who better to lead by example than Jennifer Bishop Jenkins, a master groomer, voted best groomer in all of Chicago. Jennifer manages to balance her passion with something equally important being a boss. So I feel like we have a lot of real estate to work with. So lucky to have a standalone building. Mm -hmm. We've got to do something about this, though. You wouldn't even know it's shampooches. Hello! Hey. Good morning! How are you? Good, good to see you. You too. Welcome back. Hi, Hi. this is Jennifer. Really nice to meet you. And you also. So I know we've been telling you about her, but she's a pretty big deal. Holy smokes. So. Yeah, she's going to have a lot of good advice, I think. I'm excited. So you want the tour? Yes. The grand I tour? I do. This is where people come in. Yep, this is just my lobby. I think there's a lot we can do out here, though, to create kind of a little bit more of a um, welcoming waiting area. Um, let's talk about the bunny. OK. His name is Sir Rudy. It does take up a lot of space kind of out yes. here. I feel like there, this is a great space for some retail. And then this is our wet room. It is like a coat closet. It's so tiny. So I do see electricity next to water. Mm -hmm. Kind of a big no-no in dog grooming business setups. This is my grooming room. My table is old, needs a lot of work, probably just replaced. So the most important thing is safety. There's some safety issues on any time that your equipment is not in really good shape. Okay. So right across the hall is where I will put, you know, one family's dogs. I don't have a kennel bank. Have you ever thought about boarding or daycare or anything? I mean, it seems like she has a lot of space here that something like that could be a nice revenue source. I just feel awful leaving them alone all night. <laughs> Actually, boarding and daycare is much more profitable for staff cost than grooming, than grooming. I just, I've only been doing it for two years, so all the advice and constructive criticism. Bring it on. Let's do it. Just walking around, we've already got a lot of ideas for Alicia. But if we're gonna talk shop, I gotta get some hands-on experience with this whole grooming thing. Also, I would like to play with a wet dog. Do you just wanna jump in head first? Let's or... do it. All right. Okay, and I just press this? Yep, just hold it down. And tell her how good and pretty she is. You're so good and pretty. <laughs> oh, I think this is like, this might be my new look. Do that and then suds it up. You gotta be so clean. How am I doing? You're doing great. Would you say I'm a natural? I would say you are a natural. All right, I did it. You did great. For a first time, I give you an A for yeah, effort. Like the hesitation in your voice is saying <laughs> mediocre. Like that's what I'm hearing. I feel like you did a, a thoroughly mediocre job. <laughs> okay, so how are you just feeling about business right now? Do you feel like you breathe easy? Is it month to month. I don't know if I will ever breathe easy, but I'm not sinking. So, you know, in a services-based business, it feels like the two ways to increase your profitability is to either do the grooming faster mm -hmm. or charge more. Or add on services. Mm -hmm. And actually, that's the way most grooming businesses manage to stay above that waterline because mm -hmm. there is a limit. Right, what you can yeah. do in a day because mm -hmm. grooming is very hard work physically. But I think we need to make that one of the goals. Other ways that we could add revenue to the business. Yeah, that sounds awesome. How many dogs a day are you doing right now? Between five to seven on a weekday and then on weekends, sometimes upward to 10, 11, 12. And you're doing that in how many hours in a day? Well, it depends. <laughs> Yesterday I was here a little over 11 hours. Yeah. Um, Saturdays sometimes are 12 maybe even 13-hour days. It's really not sustainable for you to work 
12 hour days, every day you have two young children. Right. And I know I've been there. It's really easy when you own a small business to be here all the time and then you don't really have a life anymore. But I don't want to get faster because I mean, they trust me. So I don't want to, mm -hmm. you know, throw them on my table, rush through them and then throw them down and lose the trust that I worked so hard at building. You know, I say how important my clients are to me. I'm referring to my canine clients. I'm here to please them and work with them. <laughs> I, lo I love that about you, Alicia, because I'm actually the kind of the same person. And I think that people don't realize the attachment that we get to their dogs. Yeah. I've had a rough couple of months. I've lost two incredible dog lost clients. Four this month. It's been awful. Mm -hmm. But you communicate that you have that attachment, and mm -hmm. that's why they come to you because they know that you're going to take good care of yeah. their, their loved ones. Mm -hmm. Yes. She has a heart for the work, and that is most of the battle when it comes to pet grooming. Mm -hmm. It's really just kind of the, the surrounding wrapper of the marketing, the operations, her efficiency that we can help with that I think are going to really set her up for a, a greater level of success. I think what's awesome about Sampooches is you have to really trust that person, that business, when you're dropping off a loved one, somebody you care so much about. And so those businesses make us feel cozy and homey. That's really what makes a neighborhood feel like a neighborhood. This kind of personal touch business is great for a community, but it can be hard on the business owner because it's not an app or a widget you can mass produce. You never make a dollar you don't earn with your hands. It's our job to help figure out how Alicia can maximize the hours in her day and hopefully not work so many of them. Okay, so I think we have identified kind of our key goals. So the first one being growing the business, and we're gonna accomplish that through two things. So marketing and making sure you're findable online, but then also adding additional revenue sources. So let's talk about the marketing side a little bit. So let's just do a quick search around dog grooming. Right now, you have to scroll down pretty far before we get there. In fact, it's not even on the first page. We wanna make sure that you are showing up online in a way where if they are just searching for the category, you're popping up. And a really important part of doing that will be making sure that you have a website. A lot of businesses feel like a Facebook page will be sufficient. We disagree. We feel like the website is a place for you to truly tell your whole story. Okay. So let's talk about the other side of growing your business, which is additional revenue sources. Pet Taxi is a no-brainer because it pays for itself and then some, and it's a really great service to draw in more clients. You're going to be able to compete with mobiles. You're going to be able to bring in people who are shut-ins or who are elderly. You also have your pet taxi wrapped, right? It's the best money I ever spent on advertising. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah. Okay, so let's talk about like the daycare and boarding. People really do need the services. Daycare is actually one of the industries that's just gone through the roof. It's almost pure profit. And the dogs have a great time. I they bet. love it. I love this revenue source for you as well because there's no competition around it right now, right? And we did find out from the veterinary database nationally that you have over 6,000 dogs in this area. So let's talk a little bit about the add-ons. My number one add-on service is brushing teeth. We spend almost nothing in terms of product and time, and we make a couple thousand dollars extra a month on it. So I currently do teeth brush service, but I do it for free, so. <laughs> we need to change that. <laughs> well, that's very nice of you, yeah. but you know, Part of that is as you're going through this, I think we want to build in what you want to be taking out of the business and then we need to aim high enough from a revenue perspective to get you that income. I mean, what kind of profit or cash are you bringing in each month? So I'm really bad at this with keeping up with my books and all of that. I don't necessarily know. Um, have you actually broken down your expenses? Do you know how much of it is personnel, how much of it is, and so on? No, I haven't. But the very simplest terms is how much money is coming in and how much are you putting out to operate it? Um, I don't know exactly how much. Do you know how much money you make? I don't. I have no clue how much I make. That is a huge problem. Do you know how much you need to bring into your household every month in order to keep your household afloat? And are you paying yourself that amount of money? I am not. I don't have a fixed amount that I pay myself at all. I, I haven't in the last two years. Do you even give yourself the same commission that you give to your employee? Absolutely not. So there you yeah. go. You have a lot to be proud of here. But you need to value yourself and put a real value on your time and do all your financials. She's working far too hard and too many hours to not be taking home a salary that she can even account for. She won't survive being a small business owner if she doesn't get her numbers under control.
I guess the whole time I've been in business, I've just been telling myself as long as I can pay my bills, I'm okay. It's a struggle, I guess, thinking of myself as a business owner as opposed to a dog groomer. But I mean, it's part of who I am now. So I feel like if it fails, all of that was for nothing. It's gonna be a lot of work, but it's gonna be worth it. Right. Shampooches gives us an exciting challenge because in a lot of ways, this business is a blank canvas. We have a standalone building with great bones, but no designer even paint on the walls. And an excellent groomer with a big heart, but no website or marketing materials, who just needs the knowledge to run her business more effectively. The deluxe team will handle the marketing end, while Jennifer and Alicia lead the charge on shoring up operations. And deluxe will hire local contractors and work with Ty on livening up the space. So our opportunity is to inject what we know about her into her brand. And, and the other thing about her logo, this is Bailey, her beloved dog. Our challenge is to bring out Alicia's love of color and just simplify it and potentially even still pay homage to Bailey. And then obviously her clients being her dogs and she treats all of them like family. We want to make sure we always brought in that playful feel from her business card all the way to the website. Dog owners love to see their dogs and their pictures online and in any media, so we want to incorporate a dog gallery into every page. Yay! These are awesome. Yeah. And that's yeah. just the start, but I think the environment here, especially when you're dealing with pets, should be a little bit more fun. Right? Like warm, inviting colors. Whenever they presented the mood board to me, they nailed it. And that's what we're trying to do, trying to add some character here with the colors that we've already started. But instead of walls, maybe more windows you can see through yeah. where you can see where the action's going on. Yeah, like an open concept. So this building, totally blank in terms of flow. I love it. It gives us a little more wiggle room in terms of, you know, painting her story. While local contractors take over Alicia's space, she's heading down the road to Mavis to meet with Deluxe's VP of Small Business Services, Damon Fieldgate, and get a better handle on her books. Talk about setting goals. What are your goals for this business? What income do you want to derive from it? Like how much? Yeah, how much do you want to earn? I don't know. Because... How, how much did you earn before you started this business? Um, working yeah. for someone else, yep. I would make between 50 and 60,000. Okay. When I look at some of these figures, you're nowhere near this, this 60,000 right. and you are working your butt off. Mm -hmm. You know, I feel that the time is right for a price increase. Um, I think what I feel guilty for as far as raising my prices is do I raise my prices just because I'm a business owner and I need to compensate for my time? I guess that's what I struggle with. Yes. <laughs> yes, you do. I knew that would be the answer. Yeah. But... Look, I mean, you're doing this to generate a business and generate an income for yourself. Right. Don't lose sight of that in the whole, I want to be a good, good service provider to mm -hmm. my clients. Yeah. Talking finances is always hard, but it does get easier when sales go up. And there's a lot more we can do to bring customers through the door. When you go to her about, there's no website listed. In terms of the content and the imagery and the voice, talk about how that's coming together. In doing research, we found that one of the largest concerns that potential customers have with groomers is their dog's safety. So we really wanted to design a website for them that was gonna put the owner's mind at ease. Very smart. Last year, when we worked with Discover, Learn, and Grow, we discovered this was one of the highest trust decisions. And with Shampooches, we found that dogs come a close second. So all we have to do is communicate what's already there. But in terms of operations, Shampooches could be running more efficiently. So while her space is still under renovation, we're sending Alicia to Chicago to see what she can learn from the well-oiled machine that is Love for Dogs. Hey, Alicia! <laughs> Immediately, when you first come into Jennifer's lobby, she has a lot of different retail. So definitely gave me some ideas. This is our bathing area, and then we go in here for blow drying. Hey, Toby. I would have never, you know, thought to have a separate drying room. And I have the space to have a drying room. So I think that's something that I'm going to try to implement in my salon as well. I think she could see here that carefully segmenting our space, we can do a lot more dogs. Having seen Jennifer's shop in action, Alicia can now guide what is turning out to be the biggest renovation we've ever done. It's a huge transformation that's gonna happen to that building. We're gonna put it in a window so people can see their dogs being groomed. When you can see through a place into the other rooms and you realize, okay, I, I can definitely leave my, my loved one here because I can see what's happening back there instead of being like, I have no idea what's going on behind closed doors. And the renovations aren't just about customer experience. 
They're about growing revenue by helping Alicia groom more dogs in a day without sacrificing quality. So we can put a bigger washing station into a different room. You know, she can get larger dogs uh, in there. You know, it would be a huge difference to her business. But with all these balls in the air, we got a voicemail from Alicia pumping the brakes on one of our new revenue ideas. Hey, Julie, I was thinking about the doggy daycare, and I think that right now that's probably not the best decision to go at Shampooch's grooming. But for right now, I think that we should just focus on um, adding the pet taxi service to my salon. So wow, I wasn't not, expecting that. No, that's not the best news. Well, I'm glad she thought it through. It sounds like it wasn't an easy decision, but uh, we'll go with it. When we work with small business owners, we don't always agree with their decisions. But the truth is, no one knows their business better than they do. And actually, it's exciting to see Alicia making bold decisions about her salon. It does mean that we need to put all our energy into these other potential revenue streams. Leashes, collars, apparel, definitely. Anything that they can wear that's increasing that brand awareness. I love the bandanas. I can just imagine the happy little dog trotting out and he's got his bandana on. And, and back in Alton, Alicia is preparing to take advantage of the attention and new customers this makeover will bring. I hired a new groomer named Emily and she started Monday. She's incredible. That can really help increase your capacity. We can't wait to get back to town and see the space transform. But over the last few months, we've gotten to see Alicia transform as a business owner. She's setting goals, trusting her gut, and developing the understanding to get from where she is to where she wants to be. We've just got a few surprises left to deliver to set her on her way. I love the new sign. You can tell that Shampooches is here. I love the colors. It's so bright. Hi! Hi it looks amazing. Thank you. Oh my gosh. I love it. I love it. I already see cars like drive by and slow down, and they're like, what is this? And then they go and get a sign. There you go. And they wrapped my car, so we've got a legit pet taxi. I love it. Just driving around, being a soccer mom, advertising for my business. Yeah, so when you, <laughs> yeah, when you own your own business, you're never not working, right. right? It looks so great out here. Let's go see some of the changes inside. I can't wait. <gasps> oh my gosh. Oh, this is so so nice. So we have oh, um, how cute. the retail that we have started so far. I haven't gotten everything in yet. What's happening with Sir Rudy Bun Bun? He is at my house. That's awesome. Yeah. Oh, this, this is, is great. Absolutely amazing. I love, <gasps> I love this. You can see into the grooming room. Right. The whole space just feels so different. So much it's bigger. Great. People mm -hmm. don't trust the grooming shops where they can't see. Right. Mm -hmm. You working on the angles. Mm -hmm. And I love these angles of the color. Yeah. It's so fun and vibrant. It is. Now. Very, very so. Great. Yeah. All right, let's go see the new washroom. Well, first we have the new washer and dryer. <gasps> they dry like a load of towels in 20 minutes or less oh. compared to the six hours <laughs> that I was spending before. The washer and dryer isn't a very kind of sexy new thing to get, it's but vital. It, it's gonna it's vital, vital to, to the, the business and it's gonna lead yeah. to a greater you know efficiency of your time too. Right. So, as well as Oh wow. Oh my gosh, I don't even recognize this room. I know that great anymore. <laughs> The room has been working great. It's laid out perfectly. This is like restaurant quality. These are amazing. I can't even believe this is the same room. And then I can show you guys the new kennel room. Oh my gosh, this is great. You've got great capacity here now. And you're gonna save so much time not standing there at your table. Right. Hand drying dogs. The place looks amazing. I mean, it looks like a completely new shop. I'm so excited about how well it's working for you. I would love to show you some of the marketing stuff so we can continue to bring in new customers. Yeah, super excited. Okay, so we landed on this logo. It's great. Love it. We still have our adorable Bailey, but this particular approach to illustration will make replication on multiple items much easier. So let's see what that looks like on your new website. Oh, look at Cooper. <laughs> <laughs> You're gonna see throughout the site, you know, your real customers or your real clients. We really trust word of mouth as, as human beings. And, you know, we wanna make sure that we're using your customer feedback. You have great testimonials. And we already have one here from Jennifer. So to be able to say that the president of the Illinois Pet Grooming Association is advocating for you and endorsing you is, is huge. 
And it's quite genuine. <laughs> well, thank Aww. you. It was my favorite moment when I first met you. You started talking about how the dogs are your clients, mm -hmm. and I could just see it in your eyes. I'm like, <laughs> yes, she's got it. Your dog clients obviously love you too. Yeah. But they're harder to quote on the website. So then we have a frequently asked questions page. This will really help with search authority. So um, when people might be uh, typing these kind of questions into a search engine, you're going to uh, have a higher likelihood of popping up as the person answering the question. And uh, this is a request an appointment page. And it allows you to get a little bit more information versus having to spend maybe another 10 or 15 minutes on the phone gathering some of that information. Perfect. And that'll just automatically populate it as an email to you. I've been taking notes this whole time, just so you know, <laughs> Because my website doesn't have all this. <laughs> so then uh, we get into, if you click on dog grooming, so we have your categories. And again, you took Jennifer's advice and these add-ons, you're charging for them now. Mm -hmm. uh, either you're being clear about where they're being included in a package, but even just having this on the website, and we'll get you a poster to put here, you know, a placard here where it's the same thing. It, it takes away some of the awkwardness of having to talk about it. But if someone's researched you on, their, on your website, they know that those things aren't just something that you throw in, but that right. you charge for. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm looking at the website, I mean, it's legit. My husband said the other day, man, it feels like you have a real business. And I was like, well, duh. But <laughs> it definitely makes it seem more like a business. It absolutely <laughs> does. And I think nothing says legitimate business more than having your own Aww. branded bags and packaging. Oh. How cute is this tissue paper? Yes, <laughs> you like that? Another test of a great logo is what it looks like on a t-shirt. Oh, but you can't be the only one being branded, so now we'll make sure oh that your goodness. clients are too. I love them. Another opportunity for them to try around town with your brand would be these custom collars. Wow. Those are awesome. Oh my oh, gosh. Great. We've got yes. you great toys Fun. that you can sell as well. There's so many things you can brand and they're yeah. unique to your business. All right, and then we noticed that you could perhaps use a few more equipment Yay. carts. <laughs> so we got you two brand new ones. Awesome. Nice. But if you've got these really great equipment carriers, you need more supplies, right? Right. All right, so. Oh my gosh. Oh, wow. Oh, goodness. These are the best. Yeah, awesome. Oh, wow. I'm so excited. I love it. <laughs> Any small business owner wants to feel like what they're doing is real. You know, like grooming is fun, but it's not my hobby. Like it's a real job, it's a profession. You have to know what you're doing. So anytime someone like acknowledges that is amazing. And everyone at Deluxe and Small Business Revolution, they've made me feel like what I do is worthwhile. So it's been great. Um, we've created branded cards for you with your logo inside you. that you can send to, to clients when they get a new dog. And then we talked a lot about how hard it is when uh, you lose a client. And so we've created sympathy cards when it's hard to know what to say um, that have a really uh, lovely message inside. And again, where you could write a personal note. Uh, just... <laughs> So while filming, my family lost our dog of 10 years. My daughters grew up with her. She was their protector, my best friend. We miss her every single day. Every day, this is Bailey's dog shop. We're gonna keep Bailey's memory alive. Yeah. This now has become a beautiful tribute to that extraordinary relationship because you have built this amazing tribute that Bailey inspired. And now you're going to share the love that you had with Bailey with other people and other dogs. And that's just, it's beautiful. Thank you. A dog comes into your life to teach you about love, and they leave your life to teach you about loss. The grief that she's feeling is what makes her good at her job. She really cares. Grief and joy, you can't have one without the other. You can't really love if you can't really feel that loss. And it's a lot better way to live, painful as it is, than to live 
flat without those things. I see the exciting things that happen to myself and my business, but at the same time, I associate Bailey so much with what I do. I wanted her to be a part of the show and my website, and she's not. But it's a tribute to Bailey. It's a fresh beginning that she wasn't part of, but still, my love for dogs is because of her. Lovitz is a family-run restaurant and a staple in their community. It becomes soul food when you have that love and that passion for doing it. But keeping it in the neighborhood is keeping them in the red. They're in the light at the top of the hill, but at the same time, they're not turning a profit. Can the Small Business Revolution team help them attract more diners but stay true to the owner's vision? If you can't be right there with it, then I'm going to be for shooting it down. Let's go see inside, bro. Oh, oh my goodness. On the next episode of Small Business Revolution Main Street. Alicia started Shampooches because she loves her canine clients, not because she's an expert at logo or website design. Visit deluxe.com backslash shampooches to learn more about how the deluxe team helped her get online with a brand as friendly as her doggy spa.